Hey guys, this is Dan with Alpine, and on today's workshop, we're going to be setting up an Optimate using the new firmware that includes Auto EQ 2.0. Okay, guys, so uh, before you get going, you're going to need to download the new software. Now, do keep in mind there is PC software for Windows, and there's also an app on your iPhone or Android. So, depending on how you want to set this up, go download the app accordingly. Uh, but if, for uh, today, we're going to show you on the PC, so this is how you get it. So you go to alpine-usa.com, and over here you want to click on support. And then you're going to scroll over here. You're going to look over here where it says Knowledge Center, and we're going to click that. And then uh, at the time of this recording, the firmware is not live yet with the new software, but, when, um, but whenever it is, you will see it right here on the screen. And this is where you'll download it. And you're going to see a window pop up very similar to this. This is the current software. And uh, this is where you'll be able to download it as well as uh, a PDF that will show you uh, how to do it just in case you're not sure. So do keep in mind if you're using uh, an Optum 6 or 8 with Auto EQ 2.0, uh, it will only work with the new software. Okay. Now, for those of you that do have an older device and you want to update it, there will be a firmware update available as well but you have to use the new software. So what I recommend doing is delete the old software off your computer and install the new one and then go from there, okay? All right, guys, so we have the PC software launched. Uh, let's go ahead and dive in and take a look. So first off, uh, you can see that it has not changed too much from what it was before. Uh, we have the green uh, power icon up here in the top left corner. That means we are connected. If it is red, then just double check your USB connection or maybe tap the icon. And then once you have a green, you're good to go. So right away, we have our master volume and sub-level right here on the top, as well as our different pages, and we'll go over those here in just a second. This is where you would select what your main source will be. Uh, so for right now, we're just set the high level in. Uh, mix source is pretty cool. That is if you want to have a secondary source that will auto-switch over once it detects any kind of signal. A great example of this is using Bluetooth. So if you want to stream directly to the DSP and just use the volume that comes on the, uh, on the included controller, uh, as soon as you start streaming, it'll auto kick over to that. Uh, that's what Mix Source will do. It's a really cool feature. And then across the bottom, that's where we'll set up our inputs, our outputs. We'll go over Auto EQ. And then a new change here in the uh, right corner is the uh, preset tuning. Uh, so that is actually for Auto EQ. When it, you can now set four different curves, uh, one of them will stay as default, but there are four positions for them. And then you can save those as a preset. So before it was the Auto EQ was either on or off, and that's it. Now you can actually set up four different target curves if you want to. Uh, moving on over, so uh, we'll we'll just kind of give a quick overview of everything, and then we'll do a setup. So on EQ, uh, this is very similar screen to what you've seen before, but instead of the six uh, presets, now you just have a store option. So whenever you do your setup here, and you set up your output channels, uh, whatever, uh, if you do any kind of manual EQ or any kind of delay over here, you would just hit store. And you can see there that ring did not animate. That means it did not synchronize. So if that happens, then I'm going to make a little, one little change. Then hit store again, and then you want to see it animate. Um, so just keep that in mind. If things are not saving, you want to see that ring animate. And just, just do a, another save, and it always goes a second time. Um, so that's where you would do all your manual setup. Now let's go take a look at the input mode configuration. So when we go to input mode, you can see here, just like before, on the top you have your low level, in, I'm sorry, your high level inputs, and, and you can look and see if uh, something in here matches uh, what kind of signal you're giving into it. Um, a very common one will be something like, uh, like this guy here, which is like assuming the factory had dash speakers and then door woofers that are ran actively from the factory system, like uh, a lot of the trucks out there full range rears, and then a sub input. So let's just say that that perfectly matches what we're doing. And then the bottom one is if we're using low level in, uh, you always have to select something, um, but you can just leave it on customized and we'll hit next. And the, since we left it on customized, it's gonna ask us how many channels of low level do we want to use? Uh, we're not gonna use any, but I'm just gonna leave it on six. So we'll just hit enter. And now we need to tell the system what are we powering? What is our system that we're installing, right? So we'll go to output mode configuration. And this, uh, just like the input mode, it has a different um, uh, examples of what kind of system we could be doing. To keep things real simple, 
Um, and a very common uh, setup here is actually this one right here. We're running active uh, front stage uh, speakers two way, as well as full range rear. And then we'll have two pre outs for sub, or we can use internal power for sub if we need to. Uh, so we'll select that. And then it's going to write all this information to the DSP. And then now, when we go over to EQ, uh, we can see that it actually set up some basic crossovers for us on the tweeters and on the woofers. And it left the rears on full range, and then it put a crossover on the sub. Now, if you want to change these, you absolutely can. And uh, when you're done, you just hit store. And if you need to know that when to hit store, it actually lights up blue. If it's gray like that, that means you've made no changes, so you're okay. Uh, and then, uh, the other thing we can take a look at is on the mixer. Now this might look pretty daunting, uh, but what's really cool is that input mode and output mode configuration actually kind of set this up for us. And, um, the way easiest way to understand what's going on here is across the bottom. These are our output channels. And then across, uh, from left, uh, from top to bottom on the left side here, these are all the input channels. Now uh, you can see every one of them is here, but we're only going to look at these high level ones. Uh, because that's what we're using for this scenario. So that's the front left tweeter, and on the input, that's front left tweeter, so we want 100% of that signal going out, and then so on. Um, if you need to mix something together, for example, the front left uh, woofer actually needs some signal from the front left tweeter to actually to make it a full range signal, then we can bring that signal in, and then on to channel three output, and then we're, and we're good. And we'll just do the same here on channels, uh, channel two out to channel four. And then we're golden. That's it. Uh, so just kind of go through and make sure. And it's, it's going to be case by case uh, scenario, but uh, that is a basic overview of how the mixer works. Um, and then, of course, we made a change. So we're going to hit store. And then our last step here is uh, really cool. This is when we do the auto EQ. So we're going to click that. Um, and I was, uh, something that's new about Auto EQ 2.0 is we've now split this up into two uh, different ways of doing it. So if you're using the high level in, you're actually going to download the files, um, the science loop files off our website, which we kind of showed you the location before. You put them on a flash drive and play them through the factory radio. And uh, whenever, and this will actually guide you through how to set the volume and everything. Um, it's already been measured uh, right now, just to kind of show you guys an example of what it looks like. But for all the other scenarios, we're using the low level in or Bluetooth or uh, the co uh, digital audio input. That's assuming you already have a flat source, so you don't have to worry about it. And that's gonna uh, that's gonna proceed just like it did before, where this, um, the tones are all generated internally, so you're okay. Uh, so we'll click. Uh, it will say not measured if you haven't done it yet, but we've already done it on this device, so I had measured. And now we can see what's what's uh, what the default curve here is. And then uh, just like before, you can go through and make your changes and say what you want. And then we can hit store. And then um, like we can hit uh, T-curve 2. I can main this. Uh, we'll just call this uh, CMA. And you can see there that it did not animate. I'm going to do that again. And now it animated. That, mean, that means it actually wrote to the device that time. So that's something I want you guys to remember. If you do not see that ring animate, do it again. And if you're not sure, just do it again anyway. Um, so now, so now that's how we can save and we can call different presets right here, uh, as well as uh, turn the EQ on and off so we can hear a before and an after. Um, by hitting bypass EQ, that does turn it off. So when you're done, make sure that the switch is in the left position. Otherwise, your EQ is not active. Um, another uh, new feature here is called center stage mode. So if, if you did not do any manual delay settings um, and you want to just can't kind of keep this thing real simple, you click center stage mode and this will let you know that uh, any kind of balance setting you've done before is, is going to be lost if you use this, like the delay settings. And this is actually uh, a way of kind of uh, you play something um, that has a good strong center image. And while it's playing, you can listen to... Uh, where it sounds on the, on the stage across the dash. And at first you would select where your steering wheel is so you can know where you're focusing the stage. And if it sounds like it's a little, I can use the move a little to the right, then you can actually move it a little to the right or to the left, whatever works in your scenario. Whenever you're happy, you're done. Just leave it on, just leave the center stage mode on and you can go back to the other screen and you'll hit, uh, and then you'll just, uh, I would always do a preset save again and then you're set. 
something to keep in mind is the center stage mode is going to be on in every preset. So if you do use it, it's not a different mode for each uh, preset. It's going to be just there all the time or not if you turn it off. So please do keep that in mind. But other than that, uh, whenever you're all set and you're done, you can uh, click, uh, you can go back to the home screen here. And um, what I always recommend doing is do a file save. Uh, this actually backs up uh, all your work to a PC. So if you ever have to reload it to the DSP for whatever reason, you have that uh, um, and then you're set. Other than that, guys, that's it. It's a really simple device. And guys, that's it. As you can see, it's a real simple process. And for the, keep in mind, for those of you that don't want to use a computer, we do have these apps available on both iOS and Android. And the exact same process can be done there. The only difference is, is you're not going to have manual EQ and manual delay. So do keep that in mind. But everything else is going to be there on your phone as well. So uh, without, with all that said, if you guys want any more information, be sure to check out our website at www.alpine-usa.com. Thanks for watching.